is meant for an adult audience. Love line may contain sexually oriented content. 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 Listener discretion is advised. Adam Carolla and Dr. Drew. Love line, coast to coast. Hey, it's the love line, I think. Phone number 1 800 L O V E 191. Fax number 310 4455. I'm Adam Carolla. That is Dr. Drew. Dr. Drew is a board certified physician and an addiction medicine specialist. Tonight, our guest, the uh, legendary Los Angeles Lakers player, Michael Cooper, part of the uh, original uh, Showtime ensemble over there, and uh, also the uh, head coach of the uh, Los Angeles Sparks as well for. Uh, well, I guess next year will be your third season, right? Well, actually, technically my second as a head coach. I was assistant coach last year and this year. Uh, uh, nice uh-huh. to be here. Thank you for having me. Oh, you know what? No one ever says that on this show. <laughs> <laughs> you, you must not know this show. We've never had a guest say, uh, nice to be here. Thanks for having me. Have you ever heard that, Drew? No. no. Well, You've only been doing the show for 15 years, so give it time. I- Michael's not our typical guest. I was going to say, show. Michael's a, a. No, but I'm a front runner. I like new things and uh, breaking into new things. <laughs> he's wearing he's not, a suit. He's not a 20 year old from some rock band. Well, I was uh, always a uh, Lakers uh, fan growing up in uh, Los Angeles, so a uh, fan of uh, Showtime and uh, Coop, as uh, we called him here. And I guess he was known as that throughout the country. But I, I don't know all all the particulars. I know you got at least uh, two or three world championships uh, under your belt. Four? Five. Five? Oh, five you under my belt. I'm, I'm, have, I'm a heavy hitter below the belt. <laughs> five. <laughs> Jeez, I didn't know you had five. Five. I, I was, what, what I didn't want to do is say five and have you come back with two and a half. No. That's all I'm saying. That. No, I believe in long things. You got five. Five of them, and what, five great ones. What year did you uh, join the Lakers? I joined the Lakers in 78 uh, as a rookie out of University of New Mexico, hometown here in Los Angeles, and uh, got an opportunity to sh- show my skills with the Lakers and t- play 12 great years with them. Yeah, yeah, with uh, all those uh, all those legends. Adam, may I ask you a question? Yeah. Okay, uh, I know you're supposed to be interviewing me, but yeah. who was your favorite team back in the 80s? And be truthful. Uh, basketball? basketball? i got to go with yeah. the Clippers, man. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, bro. No, uh, basketball it was always the Lakers. Dr. Drew, you may uh, want to test Lakers. him. Yeah. No, the, know, the, yeah. La- the Lakers were a layup, yeah. because, pardon the pun, because I grew up in the North Hollywood, and I've never left, basically, the San Fernando Valley. So, okay. And the Lakers were good. So it was a team you would have rooted for, even if you were living out of town. But right. I happen to be uh, lucky or unlucky enough to grow up in Los Angeles, and therefore I always rooted for the Lakers. And I remember all those uh, great battles with the Celtics. And uh, I mean, I remember standing at a mall with uh, my girlfriend about ten years ago, just standing in a window in front of a like uh, electronics store watching game number yeah. three or four. And I mean, those were some epic battles. I, I don't know why it doesn't quite seem the same today. Maybe it's just because I'm older and I just don't care. But I'll tell you, back then, uh, especially uh, with the Celtics, those were just, uh, I mean, I was just screaming. It, it, it was also the same with the Dodgers and the Yankees. I mean, it was it was a battle. You know what, and, and Adam, and through those days, and again, I want to thank you for standing in front of that window and watching us because, you know, we played for the fans, and I think that's what is lacking in today's game. And, you know, you got some great young players here, but the passion, I think, has gone out of it because they're so jaded by all the dollars that are flying around. And I said this before I retired, I don't think there's any one player in this league that'll ever come along that makes more than a hundred million dollars I don't believe that there's a player like that I think the only player that could that commands that kind of money is Kareem Abdul-Jabbar Wilt Chamberlain and Bill Russell mm. that's it those right. other players are great players Larry Bird Michael Jordan Magic Johnson but they do not command that and for them to be throwing the money away that they are giving away now Shaquille O'Neal and granted the players are playing but I don't feel that that money should be thrown around and I think that's what lacking today passion. well I, I was uh, and I was talking to a buddy of mine today which was how do you coach guys that are making 85 million real, you know what real I mean? gently how do you coach a guy it's like you are the boss except for the guy in the mail room makes 20 times your salary and you're gonna tell him to get you a cup of coffee he's gonna tell you to blow him you know what I'm saying yeah it just well anyway the point is you got in i mean if you sit back and uh, one day when you're 75 and uh, you're sitting sitting down on your porch and you're rocking back and forth and you're drooling just a little bit <laughs> and you sit back and reflect on your life and your career 
and being born wh where you're born and when you were born and the opportunities, I think you'll see that you hit a window that was perfect. I mean, you hit a great 12 years right in there. Right. I mean, with the right team, with the right time, with the right city. You know what I'm saying? I, I, you know, you hit it right on the head. I mean, we were. I would. I had the very pleasure of playing basketball when it really meant something to the people and to the players. And I hope I'm not drooling at 75. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sitting there. Give you 85 anyway. Okay, make, it, make it 85. Yeah, big mess there. The the point is, is yeah. If, even if you'd played today, you may have played with the Lakers for three seasons, but then you probably would have been moved on and gone to Portland or something like everyone does. Exactly, and I, you know that's the one thing that I do cherish about my career is that I'm a very few selected players to ever just get with an organization and play with it their entire career. So I am very happy about that. I always uh, loved watching uh, work. Worthy, James Worthy. He, big game, no, it's not James Worthy, it's big game, James. Big, yeah, I mean, he was so silky smooth, that guy. Well, other guys, I mean, you talk about other players, but those other guys look like they're working. Uh, Worthy always looked like he was going about half speed and still whooping everybody. He'd take the ball off the dribble, and he'd just keep it in the one hand, right off the dribble. He'd never get his other hand involved. And then he'd raise his hand up, and the ball would start pulling him toward the hoop. <laughs> it would look like it yanked him toward the hoop, and it just pushed right in, and it wasn't any big celebration or anything. He just glided right back around. Just even his face didn't look like He always looked like he was a little bored out there. Well, I think James had that uh, command of his uh, game where he didn't really let the game uh, show its emotions on him. He kept his emotions in check, and I think you know those are the hardest players to guard. Players that you can't see a sign of strength or weakness, and you know that's why he was one of the great ones. Oh yeah, yeah. I uh, I loved watching him and uh, the the whole team, as a matter of fact. All right. So, but let's talk about uh, here and now and uh, what's going on. We're uh, plugging this big uh, charity event, which is going on uh, this Saturday at uh, 530. It's the uh, All-Star Celebrity Softball Game. And uh, the money's going to uh, fight uh, domestic violence. It's going to a shelter called uh, Valley Oasis. And uh, there's a lot of celebrities are going to be involved with this. And I was not asked to do it, but I'd like to play in it. I really would. <laughs> And we got one down. And Dr. Drew, what about you? When is it? Where is it? It's uh, this Saturday. Oh. His wife doesn't let him do things on the weekend. No, I don't no. buy that. I, have to do I don't buy brother. that. It's more so the kids than it is your wife. Kids, absolutely. But I actually have to do a TV show on Saturday. What are you doing Saturday? Big Brother. Big Brother films on Saturday? Wednesday and Saturday. Oh. What time you wrapped over there? 6.30. Oh. <laughs> you're you're <laughs> I'm so having, lucky. The live right. TV right. show is live, here's live. The, here's the point, Coop. I got game. I'm telling you right now. I'm announcing it on the air. I'm making a very bold prediction. And here's the thing about, here's the deal. Yeah, they have to invite Jimmy, too. I'm sure he won't show up. I'll, I'll, we'll talk about uh, Jimmy uh, after this. But here's the deal. I got softball game. I do. And if, I'm, if I hold my ass out there, I want to play. I don't want to pl platoon with Elaine Boozler or anything like that. Adam, I want to be out on that field. What's your favorite position, Adam? I, I can go on the Baseball field. Center field, because <laughs> a wheelbarrow was going to be my second, my answer. Center field or first base? I'm left-handed. Okay. Maybe the missionary position? <laughs> was, We're going to uh, put you at it. We'll put you at you can have first base. Take it. Take I'm it. I'm gonna show up. I got I got cleats. I got a big softball mitt. I got you gotta a big have rubber bat. cleats, not in anything hard. They're rubber. Or metal. I got wheels. I got power. I I, I uh, can you hit? I can hit. I. Listen, I wouldn't talk about it on the air if I wasn't planning on whooping some ass on Saturday. And I just got to know from you that I'm going to be playing in that ball game. And I will be out there. I'll be out ooh, there ooh, early ooh, running ooh, laps. Ooh, ooh. Molly Culver is going to be there. No, she's not. Oh, <laughs> that's not going to be distracting you. You already checked that out? No, I don't. And listen, I don't care who. I, I don't care if I'm playing against uh, the ghost of Burl Ives. <laughs> I'm, I, I'm excited. I am pumped. I love softball. And I'm coming out Saturday, and I, I want all you folks to come out there and uh, and watch me. Come I on out, because it's for a worthy cause. Forget yeah, about yeah. the cause. Yeah, you well, watch me play. <laughs> I may hit a couple of homers. Is there a fence on this field? I got power. I've never seen this at the uh, Lancaster Municipal, St Municipal Stadium. Yeah. So, so I'm pretty sure there's some kind of restraint out there. Good. Fence line, that rope, string. That, don't let the uh, shabby physique fool you. I got power. All right. Now my headphones have crapped out. Drew, is yours, yours okay? Kind of around. All right, we'll uh, talk more about this as the uh, night wears on. We'll hop on the phones now. John? How you doing? You're 17. What's up? Um, well, I walked into my friend's house about a week and a half ago, and he was in full drag. Bra, panties, everything. How old is he? He's 17 also. So what happened when, you, when he saw you? 
Um, he flips out. He, tell, he starts yelling at me, telling me all this stuff, and then he slams the door. What did he tell you exactly? Um, oh. Hey, John. You idiot. You you, you uh, hang up on him there, uh, Anderson? Yeah. Anderson's had uh, an ass full of this place today. John used the F word, so we had to uh, cut him off, and Anderson's in no mood tonight because he's had some uh, technical difficulties. Mike? Yeah. That was a nice way to get started, though, with the show. You're 17. What's up? Yeah, um, my girlfriend, she's 16, and, like, whenever we get into it, she won't let us go any further than just kissing unless there's music playing. Why? Uh, she never really given me a straight answer. I've asked her about it, and she's like, no, we can't do anything unless there's music playing, so I always have to go over to CD player, put something in. And what does she yeah. say is the reason? Oh, well, hold on there, Einstein. You haven't figured that out by now that you have a CD going before you start in on it? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Uh, not really, man. What? <laughs> what what kind of music does she like? Uh, it's just anything. I mean, it doesn't really matter what it is. It's just she won't get into it unless there's music going. So Adam's question was, why don't you play the music before she asked you to put it in? Because if we know if we're in the car, if we're on the fly. Yeah, p turn on the music. I guess, but I just want to know if that, I mean, is there like deep-seated emotional things there? No, it's like the deep-seated... No, deep seated is the, how deep seated would BS we are with this guy. This, yeah, this we don't not, believe him. No. All right, sorry, Mike. Don't right. believe you either. All right. <laughs> Listen, I'll tell you why. Because guys catch on very quickly. Um, they, right. Well, well, listen, they, the guys are diabolical when it comes to closing deals like that. Are you kidding? Right. Right. Or they would. They, Right, he'd, he'd be right. running alongside the car if that's what you no, wanted him to do. Listen, if if you had a date who came over and put out and uh, requested a nice big glass of uh, snake blood, the next time she came over for a date, you'd have a gallon of snake's blood chilling <laughs> in the fridge. Maybe uh, maybe uh, and, martini and shaker seven, was and seven other reptiles represented there too. Just least. just in case she yeah. changed her mind. Absolutely, please, idiot, Angelo. Yeah. You're 22. Yep. What's up? Um, I'm a experienced smoker, I guess you could say. I've been down to college. I'm on my fifth year, so I've been uh, heavily smoking weed for about four years. And I like the way he qualifies that, that maybe why he's on his fifth year. Right. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, I it picked up the end of my freshman year. Naturally, I'm on my fifth year. And, okay. And you smoke a lot of weed, and? Um, the whole issue I've heard Drew bring up before about... The breast-like features or like nipples puffing. Right, I you, have. You get a guy, I mean, to, guy to come ask you from that, and the, you're a little old. You're 22. It's a little old. Did you start getting that around 15? No. Really interesting. So I, mean, I mean, it's probably it's probably increased over the last couple of years extremely, as opposed to if there were anything. I mean, naturally, we didn't have the regular. Smaller nipples. I don't know what. The <laughs> nice rack. It certainly. It must be the pot then. It really has to. Pot will enlarge breasts. Typically in earlier in adolescence, but at your age it can happen. And you uh, you mentioned the testosterone thing. What about testosterone? Is that what it is, is due to? No, it's due yeah, to, to it's due to estrogen. Oh, estrogen. Yeah, low testosterone. Yeah, your sperm count will go down. It's lovely. Okay. Hey, well, I, know, I know all the the horrible effects. Yeah. That's all right. Listen, you may be time to move in their training bra. That's all right. <laughs> I got my first one when I was well. I was a little younger than you. I was nineteen, but <laughs> you're still wearing it now. No, I moved. I mo moved into a B cup. <laughs> I'm not using a training bra anymore. I was wearing a C, but I got tired of stuffing it, and I thought, come on, face reality, you're buddy. You're B. B. You're B. <laughs> no, it's just full of hair. That's all. Hey, uh, Angelo. Yeah. Yeah, maybe want to slow down on the weed. He can't, like, yeah. He's, yeah, boy, he's a marijuana addict. He can't slow down. He has to stop. Right. Can you quit? Can you quit smoking the weed? I've gone through uh, that that little war already. It's it's tough. It's yeah. the whole crowd. It's the circle of friends. It's all those issues. Right. Hey, it's the pot. I don't care if you lived in Antarctica, you'd be getting the pot. <laughs> Look, really, it's a profoundly addictive drug for some friends. people. Oh, well, right. I know that. All right, you, that. you don't think you could? You can't cut back on it. You either got to quit or not. Right. I think I could maybe eventually go back to a controlled use, which would be nice, but that takes some time. I know. Are you getting stoned in the morning? Oh, yeah. No, I wait till classes are done at least. Yeah, 11. Right, but you don't no, get no, up no, until 1045, right? No, I have classes late in the day. I'm up all night. I see. All right. So you smoke spot all night, sleep for four yeah. hours. Wait, are you going to, you, you going to junior college or four-year? 
I'm going to four year school. Oh, really? Where? San Diego State? No, I'm in I'm in Illinois. Illinois. Uh Northern Illinois? No, I, 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 ISU. Illinois State. No, oh, all right. All right, Angela. You gotta you gotta quit smoking. You turn into a woman. Yeah. And then listen, and let me tell you something about being stoned. You don't look good naked when you're stoned no matter what you look like. But when you got breasts, you're really freaking out, huh? Bouncy, bouncy. Do not look at yourself stoned and naked with brass in front of a mirror. <sighs> Great advice, Adam. Yeah, thank you very much. Don't look at yourself st stoned with breast in front of the mirror. Unless Got you're it. a woman. Oh, wait, wait. Yeah, sorry. Slow down. Slow write down. that down. Michael, okay. you may want to write this down, too. I'm writing it down. Is, is AC Green, he's still playing, right? Uh, he just got released by the Lakers. Right, he got another. How many championships? Is, well, now he went uh, off that's the Phoenix his fourth for a one. while. Oh, well, you got, he didn't win any. You got five. Yeah. <laughs> but I'm still a man. Five, a ring, a ring on. Did they make one bigger for your thumb? One of those uh, championships? No, you rings? just moved to the other index. Finger. You swing to the other yeah, hand? Yeah, swing to the other hand. I'll tell you, I'd be, I'd be kind of modest. I'd probably only wear three or four of them out, you know, on a daily basis, make running errands, that kind of stuff, gardening. Probably just wear three or four of the uh, championships. I'm wearing it all. My ex-wife wears them. She has them. No way. Yeah. Dr. Drew, may I ask you a question? Yeah. Uh, I have a problem where uh, it, it, for me to um, uh, get in a certain way when I'm with a woman, is she has to have beautiful feet. Am I... Well, Adam has a theory about that. What, Adam, I hear theory. Gay. I, I, I love oh, no. feet. Uh, <laughs> low, gay. low self esteem. Low self esteem. You worship the feet. You see, what do you do this when is Adam's the, theory? When the, no, when don't, the, when don't listen too hard. When the emperor, the king, walks in the room, what do all the servants do? They get down at the feet. They grovel. You know what I mean? They kiss yeah. the feet. Well, let's think about turn up there. They bathe the look, feet. Look how tall Michael is. I'm six seven. Yeah. Maybe, right. Now, maybe his mom. Very tall. Maybe that, maybe that was all he could get to when she when he was a little kid. So your mom was eight foot tall, yeah, and all Michael attached. could. Yeah. Well, my grandmother was six four, See? and I grew up with my grandma. See? <laughs> See, but she had ugly feet. So I don't like ugly feet. They have to have pretty feet. I, I, mean, mean, I, I think it's just preference. I don't think it means preference. Okay. Okay. I mean, now does it matter if I just look at them or lick on them? <laughs> We're getting a little weird here, but but ah, well, I mean, this, is, this is a love line. I've got, you're the that's doctor. Right. You got to tell me. True. The, don't the, slow them down. The whole, yeah. the whole shrimping thing. Uh, no, wait, that's not shrimping. Isn't it? No. What's shrimping? That's, uh, I don't even know if we can talk about that on the air. That's a gay thing. What is Just it? Just close your eyes and picture that the gays have come up with something to do. Uh, all right, that's all you need to know. Go uh, ahead. Uh, the whole fetish thing, do you, you have to have that in order to function? Uh, close to it. I'm 90% have to have that. I yeah. love feet. And, and some people... Kissing, and, licking, the whole work. Is there anything that... Uh, People develop these sort of fixations on objects or parts of people that mm -hmm. they need in order to function sexually, and it, and it usually is a way of protecting from feeling overwhelmed in the intimate moments. In other words, it feels you feel like you get lost in it or sort of swallowed up by the whole experience, and so people develop these preferences that they sort of stay focused on as a way of. Really, the theory is they sort of maintain control over the circumstance for themselves emotionally. Yeah. Emotionally, yeah. Adam is the breast. Speaking of feet, yeah, I like breasts. Well, see, I, I love like, breasts, too. Oh, good. I'm, I'm breast is his man, too. Thanks. And I love... But Adam is yeah. Adam's like... No, yeah, that's his, I really uh, love... That's all I see. I believe the feet are there to hold up the breasts. Well, that's see... That's their only function. And speaking of feet, and I just got to say something because we're doing this uh, charity thing on Saturday. If I see another goddamn charity thing where they're auctioning off one of Shaq's shoes, I will kill myself. <laughs> it's like, yes, he has a huge shoe. We get it. Every single charity event, everything I go to, there's they're they're putting display cases. That's what but Adam, shoes. have you seen his shoe? It's crazy it's incredible. big. You can crazy stick your big. foot in there with your shoe on in his shoe. That's true, but that's you know, you know, my theory is, I think that's just from the one big foot. I think his other foot's like a ten and a half or eleven. <laughs> that's what I was thinking about because they never have both shoes. It's always just the just one the shoe, one. and I think he wears like a size twenty eight on one. But the other shoe that they don't talk about, eleven. Ten and a half, eleven. But you know what? It's always his right shoe. It's never his left. That's what I'm saying. Always I think his, his right left shoe. is like an eleven. Right I've got to look in it. He's good. His shoe is. I don't know how the guy can move. Yeah. I mean, the guy's shoe is like a spare tire. Yeah. I mean, the guys. The guy had to bring it in in a hand truck. You know, I mean, you couldn't even drag that thing in there. It's crazy. What size shoe do you got? I wear twelve. Twelve and you're six seven. Yeah. I mean, see that doesn't work out right. That's kind of small, actually. Yeah, that makes you that makes you uh, nimble. 
All right, where the hell uh, were we? We're, we're at the All Star Charity Celebrity Softball Game. That's right. That, that is supposed to be at, and that you're going to hit all these home runs and get all these runs. I got a ton of game. That is uh, Saturday, uh, uh, this Saturday, five thirty. Hey, hey, hold on. Hang on a sec. Oh, you hold on. Now that I'm giving a plug here, Drew, they have a coach. Yapping. He'll start. He'll start yelling at your coaches. That's no, okay. I won't. Yo, long, yeah. long as he gets some hits, he can yell and scream all he wants. But Kiss once he starts, once he starts. <laughs> Listen, when you got the kind of game I got, you're allowed to be temperamental. If I and if I ground out, that dugout is 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 I'll turn that place into a car wash. I'll come back, I'll start throwing Gatorade containers, I'll take the bats, throw them out on out on the field. So There's all you listeners that want to see that, you can call six six one two seven two five nine three nine for more information and see that show that Alan's gonna put on oh, it's gonna in be the huge. dugout. What's that number again? Six six one two seven two five nine three nine. That's right. That is uh this Saturday. Come on out, watch me uh hit a home run or destroy the dugout. <laughs> It'll be one or the other, I guarantee you. Michael Cooper's our guest tonight, the uh L.A. great five championship rings under his big belt. We'll take ourselves a little break. When we come back, we'll speak to Jason, who's uh, found a penile fitness program. Oh, Michael is interested in this. Too. Mm. After this. Line. I'm Adam Carolla. That is Dr. Drew over there. Wow. Phone number one eight hundred. Killing me. Am I killing you? Yeah. What, what am I supposed to turn down? Then you just turn something up. Well, I'm turning up my headphones. That, we're on the same thing here now. Oh, we are. Yeah. Everybody's connected tonight. Yeah. Adam. yeah you oh, we are. Well, this, this seems real hard to adjust because normally mm -hmm. I have it up another uh, three or four clicks, and now I can't. I don't know what's there up you with go. There. There Is that go. good? Well, right. Blah, 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 blah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Phone number 1-800-LOVE-191. The great Michael Cooper is our guest tonight. 13 years on the Los Angeles Lakers, five championship rings, and now a head coach of the Los Angeles Sparks. And, uh, you know, I hate to admit it as a guy, but this whole WNBA thing has been, uh, it's been picking up some pretty good momentum. I don't know what the – I don't know what the uh, – Attendance was the first season. Oh. I, yes. Why don't you ask him about the Nike commercial? Ah, yes. Yeah. I'd like to bring this up. It's 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 not really a question though. It's more of a issue. rant or a statement. Yeah, raise but, an issue. <clears throat> I'd like to know: Are there uh, shoe endorsements in the WNBA? Yeah, some players have some. Some players. Uh, do. Cheryl Swoops, Lisa Leslie have their own shoe. Now, now these are the biggest names in the WNBA, uh, right? right? And what do you think they uh, get for something like that? The women don't get as much as the men because the league is just now developing. Mm -hmm. I see. Oh, watch out, Michael. What you just I, said. I see. And uh -oh. uh, is Nike involved with either one of these? Uh, Nike is involved with both of them. Uh -oh. Both of them. Oh. Uh huh. Uh oh. I understand. So, so what's your point, Adam? So you're telling me that Nike. Mm -hmm. Uh, does the endorsement, the shoe endorsement? Well, for they have Lisa the shoe. Leslie. They have the shoe endorsement for the whole league, but those right. two players they pick out to have their shoe modeled after. Uh huh. And what do you think Nike paid uh, someone like Jordan in his in his prime shoe wise? Too much money. Yeah, I mean we're talking millions a year, right? Millions. And uh, Lisa Leslie, Cheryl Swoops, not even not close. Not a tenth of that, right? But that will come. It's like anything that's come. being born, they eventually will get to that point. But, but right now, Nike is not paying them a, a twentieth of what they paid. No, I, I would say no. Michael Jordan. Okay, now yet. Nike runs spots where they have the uh, black female announcer mm -hmm. doing the uh, little, little homage mm -hmm. to the Warriors. And she wants to know why the sisters aren't getting paid as much. How come the girls aren't getting the big bucks? They work just as hard. They sweat just as hard. But yet they're not getting paid the big bucks like the guys are. Nike runs this spot. So here's my question to these pussies over at Nike. You pay Cheryl Swoops. What you paid, Michael Jordan, or shut the F up. Okay, that's it. You want to know why they're not making the big bucks? Because you're not paying the, the big bucks, you pussies. Pay them. Pay them or shut up. I hate that spot. It drives me insane. I know Michael's getting scared now. <laughs> but I go ballistic when I see that because, Nike, you are the ones who are not paying them. You want them to get paid the same as men? Fine. Go ahead and pay them. Pay them. But, Adam, hey. it's like that old saying, what have you done for me lately? Jordan sells a lot of shoes for Nike. That's well, right. Now That's the fact why he comes, gets paid more. The fact comes now is women's professional sports 
through and through. Basketball, baseball, soccer, the whole right. works is starting to rise up now. That's and right. just now. So, you yeah. know, the ladies have to understand that all these ladies that are coming now are front runners. They are they're the trailblazers for these other young ladies that are coming up the next 10, That's 20 right. years. That's why Nike should pay That's them. Oh, well, eventually it's going to come. Eventually. All right. Here's my then here's my um, my suggestion for Nike. Hold the commercial off. <laughs> Stop the belly aching and no, the complaining. Got to put it out there now. Put it out there, put now. It out there you now. pay them. These Let commercials, Nike pay them. These commercials are for the younger kids. They're inspiring young people to come on up and be athletes now. All right, but what would you say if I ran a spot as the owner of a business saying, "Why aren't my employees being paid more?" <laughs> but it's a young lady it's saying it. It's my business. So I now, own it. yeah, well, they're getting her to be the spokesman. I guarantee you, next, it's not going to happen overnight. The next three, four, five years, the Contracts will slowly go right. up what as you, women's basketball come to rise. What, what do you think uh, Cheryl Swoops and uh, Lisa Leslie get paid for those shoe contracts? I'm just taking a wild guess. I don't even have a, a real clue, but this is just a wild guess. I would say, uh, and don't hold me to this. I won't. I will just throw this up there. They might, they might be getting twenty five thousand. Might if wow. that. Might if wow. that. Wow. That's so but I, you know what? Again, don't you, hold me. I won't just, hold you I'm to it. Assuming, but if they were getting a hundred thousand, you'd be surprised. If they were, I would be From thoroughly Nike. shocked. I would You'd be, be thoroughly shocked, shocked if Nike yeah. was paying them a hundred thousand. And yet, if Michael Jordan was making less than twenty million, we'd also be shocked. That's right. All right, Nike, here's your chance, you big pussies. Put your money where your loud mouth is. Go ahead and pay these girls who ain't worth it because you ain't paying them. Go pay them a million. No, pay them $15 million a year for a shoe contract that ain't worth it to you, and then they'll be getting paid just as much as the boys. All right? And then you can shut up. Until then, don't run the ad. But That's you know what? Saying. And this is what I say to anybody that talks about Nike. Before Jordan, there was George Gervin. There were so many other athletes that wore Nike to put Nike up on the map. Then Jordan came along, and he was that exceptional athlete to take it over the top. So, again, it's going to take people to come in and set the pace, and then there'll be somebody to take it and run. How is the attendance uh, going? The attendance is good. you got a few teams, and we're one of the teams that hadn't done well. We did extremely well this season, and we're going. I think here in Los Angeles you have such a hard sell because there's so uh. many other things going. Is that old saying, if you build it, they'll come? Well, if you win, they'll come in L.A. Right. And, all, you know, we had a great season this year, 28-4. and four. We're moving to the Staples Center next year, and we're going to get our attendance. But attendance is getting getting big in the WNBA. But uh, nationally, uh, over the over the league, what was it the first season, and what is it in season number well, four? as in you know? the Charlotte uh, Sting that are averaging like 10,000 a game. I think six, seven a game is still respectable. That is. And, I mean, sure. again, until people – and you have to realize is we're in the market during the summer where everybody is vacationing now. Right. So the WNBA is in a family atmosphere, rather where the NBA is marketing that hardcore athlete such as yourself, that guy that's going <laughs> to drink beer and come to the game, Adam, and sit there no matter who's playing, the Clippers or the Lakers. The WNBA wants the whole family to come out, and that's why they're doing a good job, I think, in the marketing. All right, there's not a girl on any team in any 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 team in the league that you couldn't put a weapon on though, right? In in your street shoes. I'll right? guarantee. I'll, I'll I'll bet, Adam. I'll bet you a thousand dollars that you, there's probably I can name three players on our team that I know you couldn't beat. Oh yeah, <laughs> that's that's true. That's true. But it might be fun. Maybe we'll do something with the man show uh, next year. We'll play, uh, get a little game going. You know, me and my partner, uh, Jimmy, on the man show played uh, a couple of the Juggy Dance Squad girls and beat them. And they had, they had college uh, uh, scholarships to play basketball. But they, uh, they, weren't, they weren't WNBA material. No, there's definitely no. a difference. No, they're good. I've seen pros. those girls play. And I'm going to tell you this, Adam. Women, the WNBA players per player play harder and better than any player, any team, or other men in the NBA. Really? Per player, from guards to the big people. And and what about, is anyone dunked in a game yet? Uh, Lisa Leslie tried. No one has dunked in a game, but that's why I love the game, because it's played below the rim. They have to use all the fundamental aspects of basketball. Can can uh, Lisa Leslie, could she dunk in practice? Yeah, I actually, believe it or not, I used to run a camp in Pasadena in 89, and Lisa came when she was at SC, or could have been a little bit sooner than that. And we, her and I had a dunking contest, and she wow. actually was hanging stride for stride with me. Really? But eventually I pulled through with a two-hand over the back rim rattler, and she couldn't <laughs> hang. <laughs> and she, and how tall is she, She's 6'5". Oh, okay. Yeah, so she, now, if she can dunk all day in practice, she should be able to squeeze one off. Well, it's it. tough. In a game, you're playing up and down all of a sudden. You have to, no, that's just bad coaching. If, if anyone would do it. Uh, <laughs> Let her, okay, here, here's, below the belt. here's what you need her to do. You need, next time you guys get ahead, 
okay, here's what I want you to do. First off, I want to go out there in like a wig. <laughs> And high heel sneakers. Like high heel sneakers. <laughs> like next time you guys get twenty points ahead in the game, just as a goof, just to bring some good attention to the game. Because when things are starting up like this is, sometimes you got to do a prank or some hijinks to get a little attention. You send me out there with the big stuffed bra and the big rouge on my cheeks and the big pippy long stocking wig to run up and down the court. That'd be fun. <laughs> but number two, you have Lisa Leslie. You have her cherry pick. Next time you guys get twenty points ahead, just have her cherry pick back there and just work on it during practice and get her a dunk because you get her a dunk it's on all the news yeah that night and it's a big deal well we were playing indiana fever this year and she got a breakaway and she tried to dunk it came up a little bit short she jumped on the high side she tried to come from the uh side of the rim and i think a woman that can dunk is gonna have to come from the front right but there's a player up in utah margo didick who's seven two oh, and yeah. she will be the first one to dunk i think if she can get a breakaway she'll be the first to dunk if you don't use my cherry picking plan and then the first <laughs> dunk is going to be over there and not in la where it belongs okay we're gonna keep it in LA. Jason? Yeah. You're 20. What's up? Hey, well, uh, I browse porn a lot, and a lot of times when I'm on there, I see all these advertisements for uh, penile fitness, some type of a penis enlargement program, I guess. I see. I was wondering, uh, I mean, is that a scam or does it work? Or, I mean, what's all of that about? If it worked, it would not cost thirty nine ninety five. That's right. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah, those pumps would be, uh, in. well, you'd have to lease them. Well, they would, they would be like that uh, <laughs> German manufacturing equipment, you know. It costs you eight or 900 bucks just to keep it for each month, and you'd have to insure it as well. Yeah, well, I've heard of the pumps, too, but but there's the stuff on the Internet now that it's not even a pump. They talk about there's ex exercises you can go through. How it's do because those they, work? They, that's because they can no longer fool you with the pump BS. They have to move on to something else. Uh-huh. Yeah, it doesn't work. So I wish it did. Cam, huh? As far as uh, we know. Why are you so worried about that? You're 20. Don't you have other things to think about in your life? Yeah, I think about other stuff, but it's just, you know, I, don't, I see it all the time on the Internet, so I'm just curious about I'm it. 20, hey. Michael Cooper is working on his second uh, championship NBA ring. championship, yeah. <laughs> but you're still thinking about his penis. Hey, Jason. Yeah. You're, you do what I do. Instead of focusing on ways to make the penis bigger, you focus on ways to shrink the balls. That's uh -huh. going to make the penis look bigger. <laughs> you understand? Yeah, How about swelling the self-esteem? You won't care about the penis anymore. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's right. That's right. Put one of those big uh, vacuum pumps on your head and swell your self-esteem. Right, Drew? Yeah, that's it. That's what I want to hear. Hey, another thing? No. Yeah, yeah, I want to hear what this guy's got to say. No. What? Hey, wh when does this air? It airs right now. Where are you? In Austin, Texas. Ah, uh, It's right now. I is think. it now? Oh, it's two hours later there, right? Yeah, it'll air tomorrow night then. Tomorrow night. All right, turn that's on the radio. Out. Wait a minute. What, are you listening to me from last night? Well, I'm, I have the radio down right now. Right. But before before I came on the phone, I had it up, and it's a whole other program. It's 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 you, but it's got the chick from Sabrina. I think. Right. On. Right. Okay. okay it's last Whatever. Night. You'll hear this tomorrow night. Okay. All right. So Thanks stay tuned. All right. There you go. I had this other plan to enlarge my penis, which was to carve out the area around it. You know what I mean? The trench. Base, a trench. Trench around yeah, it. Trench around Yeah, as if, you know, like let's say you have your mailbox sticking up off your front lawn, mm -hmm. and you can't get any more height out of it. So, because it'll fall over, you you dig around it, you lower the wow. surface around it. Therefore, it makes the post look bigger. What about that, Drew? That's pure genius. Thank you, <laughs> Drew. What what now? In a what, more effective way too. What about masturbation? Wouldn't that enlarge it? No, just for the moment that you're masturbating, but that's it. No, it doesn't do anything over the long haul. Okay. That's good enough for me. Let me ask you yeah, this. I've been working on that technique for years. Believe keeps... me, I'd, I'd have my, my Johnson in a wheelbarrow <laughs> right now if, if, if uh, masturbation made it larger. But how does it work? And I, I, know, I know you've given me the answer to this a few times, but the way to make a muscle larger is to bring blood to that muscle. Right? Yeah, that's one of the issues. Is that one of the ways to do yeah. it? I mean, when you're doing curls for your bicep. Well, blood delivery is necessary for the growth, but the growth is the result of the using of the muscle fiber and increasing the workload in that fiber and tearing it down and increasing the protein. Okay. But essentially, when you have an erection, you are not only bringing blood to that area, but you're sort of putting a workload on it. Too. Not a muscle. It's, no, but no, it's not a muscle, no so muscle there's nothing there. to grow. Yeah. It's like saying... Uh, what if I put a vacuum device on a on a balloon? It would just suck air or water to that place, right. and then when you left, when you took the vacuum off, it would just go back to its shape. Right. 
that that's what essentially it is, right? right? Your penis right. is just a cavern exactly. that holds blood. It's got a little hole in it so you can tinkle, right? Exactly. So a, tube. Tinkle? a tube down. Tinkle tinkling. tube? Tinkle tube, yeah. TNT? Right. All right, Michael Cooper's our guest tonight. We just did one call. That's fine. Let's do one more. All righty. <laughs> oh, man. I was yelling about uh, the WNBA for too long. Yeah, no kidding. Hello. You're 16. Yeah. What's up? Um, well, probably about two weeks ago, me and my boyfriend had sex, right? Mm -hmm. But we had it unprotected. Mm -mm. And he didn't, he didn't, you know, he didn't ejaculate inside of me or anything. All right. But I was just wondering if you could become pregnant. Yes. Just from, like... You can get pregnant just from penetration because guys sometimes leak a little fluid that's high in sperm. Right. Yeah. And that can happen. This, when did you have this encounter? When did you guys do this? We did this um, about two weeks ago. Two weeks ago. I see. So it's time for a pregnancy test just to I did sure. one. Okay. So you're fine. And, like, it came out negative. Obviously. Okay. Where, uh, where did he uh, ejaculate eventually? Um, in, like. In the bathroom. The oh, in the bathroom? Yeah. Who says chivalry's dead? <laughs> Where, all over the uh, monogram towels or no. magazine rack? Why don't you get on the birth, com tray? Get on the birth control pill, Lauren, or at least keep the morning after pill around, okay? Uh -huh. Hold on a second. In the bathroom? Yeah. How does that work? Like... He just jumped up all of a sudden? He jumped up and ran into the bathroom? Because, like, my TV room is, your, like, right next to the bathroom. Your Your TV room is next... Yeah. Your tea room. Oh, I see. So the bathroom's near it. Yeah, it's right next to it. So you're saying the bathroom's in the house? Yeah. Oh, I see. Well, now it's all making sense to me. Yeah. Do you okay. understand why we're having a problem, Lauren? What? No, why? Here's. here's we don't understand how this guy s jumps up all of a sudden and runs into the bathroom. Is that what he does? It wasn't like he, like he felt it coming on. Uh huh. And then, like. He jumped up and ran into the bathroom. He didn't, like, jump up. He just. Got up. Sashayed into the bathroom? Yeah. He and then what did he do? Just uh, point himself toward the tub or something? No, I wasn't in there. Wow. That's he nice. Did his own thing. Yeah. Wow. You weren't even around. No, I was in the tea room. Yeah. He could have faked it. I've done that before. No, I, he didn't. Yeah, I go there, I excuse myself the bathroom, and I go, uh, oh, and then I just walk back out. Ew. Yeah. It's great. Chicks dig that. Then you saved yourself, that, that, thereby you saved yourself for the real thing? That's right, for masturbation, for yeah. my precious yeah. masturbation. That's good. Yeah, That's I don't good. like a, a vagina getting in the way of where my hand should be. <laughs> right, okay. Okay. All right, Lauren. But you can get pregnant then. Yes. Yes. Keep them more. The get penis, on the pill, please. The penis will leak. Absolutely. Please. please. Okay. All yeah. righty then. Thank you. All right, Lauren. Now. It's Drew, would, if it, that's quite, would you recommend that she take another pregnancy test, even if that one came out negative? Y if it's been two weeks, she's probably okay. She's okay? Yes. Yeah, okay. The great Michael Cooper's our guest tonight. <sighs> championship uh owner of uh, five championship uh, rings with the los angeles lakers we'll take ourselves a little break we'll be back after this oh too loud huh Did i do that to you guys hey it's the love line i'm adam corolla that is dr drew over there phone number 1-800-LOVE-191 michael cooper's our guest tonight michael uh Played uh, 13 fabulous seasons with the uh, Los Angeles Lakers. Five championship rings, I was uh, surprised to hear. I knew there were uh, a few in there, but five. I don't, I don't even know in sports. Does anyone have uh, more than five? Do you know what I'm saying? Bill uh, no, Jackson. He closed uh, the Bulls to six. Well, for, he's white, so that doesn't count. <laughs> he's uh, The Niners, uh, Niners have four, four or five, five Super Bowls. All right. But I'm saying, yeah, I know there's a few guys, and there's a few guys who played like, uh, you know, guys like Matt Millen who played for the Raiders, got a Super Bowl ring, and I think went to the Niners and got a few, and that kind of thing. But I don't know anyone who has more. Is there anyone who has six in any sport? Oh, yeah, the Boston Celtics they're back then. Bill Russell and them have like 10. Wow. They won 16. He really? Won like, uh, eight in a row, 30, nine three. in a row. Really? Yeah. No, and uh, Anderson said the Canadian uh, Montreal Canadiens have 33. But I'm talking about one dude on on the Canadians. You know what I mean? There's like one guy, um, uh, Rogi Lachon or something, who has like uh, 11. Yeah, but uh, hockey that doesn't count. It's not a real sport. All right. Dare you. And Bill Russell, that was too long ago. That's ancient <laughs> history. I'm gonna put some. I'm gonna put an asterisk by this. But anybody since let's say 1965, maybe 1970, anybody have more than five? Rings well, Michael Jordan. The Bulls, have six? the Bulls won six, yeah. 
during the 90s. I just stop crapping on my point. I'm trying to make <laughs> you look good. Oh, well, I mean, you got to give credit. Yeah, you were still, right. I you guess know? five's no but big But I tell you what, they won them when no there wasn't no one in the league. That's right. That's right. Five, no big deal. <laughs> that's not. What, what do you got, Drew? Drew, you got three, right? Five, seven. Oh, seven. oh, man, I'm sorry. Jeez, I didn't know. Lisa? Yeah? <laughs> You're 26. What's up? I have a weird female orgasming question. Great. Great. I know. Fabulous, huh? Mm-hmm. Okay. So my question is, why do different vaginal sensations create different orgasms? You, you experience different things yourself. Yeah. Cause like, like Some women... Having, oh, that was really nice. What's that? <laughs> Your little sound effect. Yeah. Like if, um, like if my boyfriend's going down on me, you know, just clitoral stimulation... I also need vaginal stimulation to have a clitoral orgasm. Mm -hmm. yeah. But if I'm having like an erotic sex stream, I wake up having a, a vaginal orgasm, which uh, feels totally different. I see. Mm. I'm not sure all your compatriots have totally different experiences, one versus the other. In fact, rarely do we hear people having dramatic differences. Yeah, they usually it usually just falls under the heading of orgasm. But right. Drew, maybe you can. Drew was telling me off the air that he has penile and anal orgasm. <laughs> <laughs> I want to know, like, what's the difference in that sensation? He's having a, an uh, anal orgasm, Drew. Well, no, no big why, sensation. Why don't you share with him what the difference is? Like, oh, like, yeah. you, okay, you want me to elaborate? Yeah. Okay, so, like, okay, like, for instance, when I'm masturbating uh -huh. and I use a vibrator, yeah. it's a completely different feeling as opposed to having somebody's tongue licking my clitoris. Okay, hold on. Let me write that down. So you're saying you got a piece of plastic uh, wedged up, yeah, that feels different than a guy's tongue along the uh, outside of your vagina. Okay, let me see. Yeah, like the tongue feels much better. Oh, I see. Okay. Like, right. like, it, like the orgasms are, you know, you hear, right. you hear stories of mind-shattering orgasms, like my right. whole body trembles. Right. So you're saying, for instance, uh, for me, getting a blowjob might be different than, like, uh, putting a mop handle in my ass or something like that. Would that you saying it'd be different? Well, you'd have to jerk physical? off with the mop handle in your ass. I, think. I see. Done and done. <laughs> okay, okay, so that's a different sensation is what you're saying. Yeah, and I was yeah. wondering if, if it was a different thing because, like, sometimes. No, but here, yeah, Lisa, I think I think the question we we're asking was is what, what is the difference? What's the difference in the orgasm? What is we the, understand? Describe the difference because men have one kind, and most women have one kind too. Okay, like in a clitoral one, it feels like I can feel my vaginal muscles clamping down as well, and and I'm one of those lucky people who ejaculate when I orgasm. Holy you know, shooting, whatever you want to call it. Yeah. Okay, so I can feel like my vaginal walls palpate in 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 a clitoral one. In a clitoral one. All right, and in and in a vaginal <laughs> one, what do you feel? I just it feels like I have to urinate. Is what it feels like. It feels like I have to urinate like really intensely, and then I feel a release. Uh huh. It's not, well, it's that, not as, that's that's urine great. flying out. By the way, that release. Maybe it's not a orgasm even. Taste. No, 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 because it's not the same consistency as urine. You know, it's like a milky right. white. I see. Hmm. All right. Hey, uh, Lisa. Yeah. I'm. I'm. Uh, you're a handful, baby. I sure hope you're good looking, or this is going to be. This is a mess. I really. It's going to ruin my masturbatory session tonight. You're I'm a good... nurse too. Does that help any? It means you're crazy. <laughs> oh, <No. laughs> oh, wow. It's funny when they. Uh, you know. You know. It's always funny on this show when you say someone's crazy. And they give you that uh, Ar that Arnold from Happy Days like laugh, <laughs> <laughs> laugh, you know. What's up with the nurses, Drew? You work with them. Why are they all nuts? Um, I would refer people to a book called The Drama of the Gifted Child. For the it's for the for, for, for about nurses? People, no, no, the people who become caretakers. Okay, because all all nurses are whacked. Well, right? it's a kind of a codependency. All right, they're not whacked. They just it's certain. They're nutty. Yeah, character concepts. All right, you're having a whole bunch of different. Hey, you're orgasms. lucky you got a bunch That's of right. nurses, right? I don't know. I don't go to the hospital that much. <laughs> Ivy? Hello? You're 24. Yeah. What's up? Um, well, like, recently I've been starting to remember, like, uh, things that happened to me years ago. Like what? <laughs> like, um, like being raped. At what age? Twelve and a half. That was the first time that happened? Yeah. Who yeah. raped you? It was, uh... <laughs> It was like kind of a boyfriend type thing. I mean, boyfriend. I was like holding hands at the time. <laughs> How old was he? He was a year older than me. Why was it you had not remembered this all these over 12 years? Well, 
I was using drugs, <laughs> actually. At the time you were raped? No, no. No, after like that. After. Mm-hmm. You still can remember stuff. I've done my share of drugs. I remember stuff. Um, well, anyway, when I quit, like, shortly after, they, I was on antidepressants, so uh, I stopped with that, like, about... Less than a month ago. All right, it's, so it's a common thing for people that have been addicted to start to remember things and have feelings that they really don't want to have or clearly have been avoiding. So that's part of recovery is getting into all that and getting through okay. it. Hey, uh, Ivy? Yes? we got to take ourselves a break. Okay. i gotta, I got a whiz. All right. <laughs> now here's, here's the deal. If you got raped, you're going to have to get some counseling. And if you're a drug addict, you're going to have to get some counseling. So stay in the program and keep with the counseling and don't hide from the feelings. Just just deal with them and, you know, let it come out and deal with it and get on with your life. I mean, can you do some counseling? We'll find out. What do we do, put her on hold? Yep. I, I, was, try, I was wrapping up the goddamn call, Drew. There you go. Hold on. Oh, forget it. Hey, Ivy? Yeah. Hello? What's up, man? What's your sign? My I'm sign. screwing with Drew now. Can, can you, you have a therapist? Do I? No. All right. Why don't you get one? Get a therapist? She has okay. one. She has a said Somebody was treating her as an All right. Um, Let's just keep going with that stuff. Listen, we got to take a break. Okay. I mean, I, I don't want to be cruel, but there's there's no easy easy answer here. You got raped. You got to you got to deal with it. You're an you gotta addict. You got to get. You got to stay in recovery. You got to do daily work on this. All right. We'll take a break. Hey, love line of Animal Corolla. Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> there we go. Never do quite get that right. Uh, that is Dr. Drew over there. Phone number 1 800 L O V E 191. Former Laker great Michael Cooper is our guest tonight. He is here uh, talking about the uh, All Star Celebrity Charity Softball Game, which is taking place uh, this Saturday. And uh, here's the phone number if anyone wants to come out and uh, check that out. Again, watch me uh, Homer or destroy the dugout. The number is uh, 661 793 9037. Again, 661 793 9037. There'll be a bunch of celebrities there. Takes place about 5 o'clock this uh, Saturday. And uh, bring the kitties, call that number, get the information, and uh, come out and, uh, and support a good cause the uh, Valley Oasis Domestic Violence Shelter, which I'm guessing somewhere in the valley. Is that true, Michael? Lancaster. Lancaster. All right. Lord knows there's uh, probably plenty of uh, domestic violence over there in Lancaster. And let me tell you my uh, domestic violence policy. Uh, cops show up the first time, they break break up the fight. But if they show up the second time, they're going to shoot somebody. When I'm in charge, that's my plan because uh, I don't need the cops running around playing nursemaid to everybody. There's, these cops are not counselors. I don't like them being called out to the house every 10 minutes. My thing is if you're a couple and you gotta, someone's, you're calling the cops, you've got to get out of that house. You got to get apart. You know what I mean? Eh, the cops could show up once every three years, but if they're coming out a couple times a month, I want them to shoot somebody. I really do. And then, what about Adam? What about just taking them to jail and let them cool off? Uh, okay, I'm all okay, right. I'm all right with taking them to jail. Uh -huh. That's fine. But if the phone rings two weeks later and the cops are coming out again for another argument, then I want someone to be shot. Well, first time, two weeks. Second time, a month. Third time, a year. And then let's go like that. I want everyone, here's here's what I want. I want everyone to have uh, three 911 calls in their life. That's it. Use more than that. I, I look at 911 calls like lawsuits. I would like, here's what I'd like to do. I'd like to find all the people in society that have called 911 more than 10 times in the last two years, and I'd like to find all the people in society who've had more than three lawsuits in the last five years, and I'd like to put them all in a big net, tie a rock to it, and throw it out in the middle of the ocean. Okay, how cool. Th these that. are the troublemakers. <laughs> you know, it's always funny when one of these guys is out pleading his lawsuit, and it's like, uh, well, uh, Mr. Johnson, uh, this is your 11th lawsuit in the last 18 months. Uh, doesn't that, wouldn't that just raise a little bit of a flag if you're on the jury or the judge? You know what I mean? <laughs> 
I've managed to make it 36 years without one lawsuit, and these guys are on their fifth in the same month. You know what I'm saying? Why can't we just call? I would just start yelling liar halfway into whatever the guy was saying. <laughs> I don't care if he was burnt over 90% of his body. It's like, hey, listen, buddy, you should have thought about that. Your first 18 lawsuits. Now it's your 19th, and we're it's the boy who cried lawsuit. Tossing your ass right out, and it's the same with the domestic violence. Cops break it up first few times, then then you got to get a divorce. That's it. All right, where are we going here, Drew? Back to the phones? Yeah. Joe. Yes? You're 23. Yes, I am. What is I it? I want to congratulate you, Adam. You are my God, my king. Thank if you. I was gay, I'd be your bitch. Thank you. Dr. Drew, uh -huh. I love you. Uh -huh. All right, now my question is, in my last six relationships, uh, the first the first major one, well, not the first major one, but ever since my ex-fiance, her and the other last five girls have all been sexually molested or raped. Molested. And I want to know why I've been the one to find these last six. I mean, I've only gone out with six girls, and every one of them has been that way. It's funny. Molested is like someone hit him with the molest molestation <laughs> ray, you know, like from the big molestation gun. Right. Now they've all been molested. <laughs> all right, so... They were all uh, molested, and you, molested, yes. yeah. And you want to know why you're attracted to these women? Yes, I've met, could have all, I've met them all in different genres. I right. mean, I met one at church, and then I quit going to church after I met that one. Yeah, how we could pick six for six is really the question. Wise, yeah. yeah. Got great radar. Yeah, I want to hit the uh, red onion with you on a Saturday night and see what we pick up, Joe. <laughs> well, what is it about them that you that attracts you? Do you think? I don't know. I'll be sitting at the bar and I'll see like a couple of girls walk in and I'll look at which one I like the best and and uh, which one's like best looking and it's got the qualities that I like. You know, what like are the qualities? Oh. And stuff like that. Oh, the qualities. Start, what? Yeah. Well, and people I'll just go up there and start talking with them and then we'll like if we'll go out or whatnot. Like we'll go out two or three times and we'll end up sleeping together. And I can just tell from the first time I sleep with them that there's something wrong. And so we'll talk about it. You know, and then they'll say, "Oh, well, I was raped in my past, or I was molested when I was younger." Like, what? Like what do you that. mean, something wrong? What do you? What do you observe? Well, he gets on them, and they start crying, yelling, "Daddy, get off of me!" Is that <laughs> no, what happens? No, it's not that. No, you can. Hey, hold on. You guys ever have sex with someone, and they start crying like halfway into it, or at the end? It's always a bummer. So I always, I always feel bad finishing. You know, it's like, oh, like I'm sorry you're crying, but just hang on. <laughs> It's like I feel like a dentist, you know, with a six-year-old. It's like I, I know, I know this is bad, but hold on, let me just finish doing this filling. We're almost right. done. Okay. Hang in there. Hang in there. You get a lollipop, and we're done. Pick, pick, pick a uh, focus on an object in the room, and just stay focused on that. I'm almost done. <laughs> My feet. <laughs> pick Cooper's feet. All right. Uh, hey, Joe. Yes, sir. Uh, whatever it is, you're doing it. You 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 know that, right? Yeah, and I want to find. I don't know what it is. Mm, they're not. These aren't sexual compulsives. These women are they? No. No. Do you have the need to no, take I mean, care I've of people? To I mean, I've had to give them every line I had to be able to make it to bed with them. And then it's only been like once or twice. I've gone out with a girl for four months and only had sex with them twice. Asshole. Do you? Uh, was one of your parents an alcoholic? Uh, my mother is. There you go. Ooh, mama. Yeah. There's where the caretaking comes from. There it is. I was a heavy drug addict. There you go. Well, are that's you mama. you got to go take care of mom like you did when you were a kid. That's your deal. That's your. That's who you are in relation to women. You're the guy that takes care of mom. Right. Keeps her from keeps her from, from falling apart and fragmenting in ways that were horrifying to you as a child. you got to recreate that and try to make it okay in your adult life. Okay, so what should he do about it? You ever think about going to Al-Anon? No. Or therapy? Uh, I, w I went to therapy once, and it was about my mother. How long did you go for? Uh, about what? two years. And where is that therapist around anymore? Uh, no, actually, he died. Nice. Is that why you stopped? Basically. Oh boy. Well, you don't want to keep going when the guy's dead, do you? Mm, yeah. For I mean, a while. It, it's cheap, but I don't know how much you get out of it. No, Plus, you need, that guy off and starts smelling eventually either, the either, corpse rots. Either Al-Anon or a therapist, again, would really be important for you and worthwhile. There you and go, Joe. This, and is this why I have a fascination about breast milk as well, then? <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, Drew doesn't know what to make of that. What, do you think it was bogus? No. And he's into it. Not necessarily. I mean, you mentioned there are guys that are into that stuff. There are. It ain't me. Breast milk? Yeah. Drinking? I don't know what they're doing with it. I don't want to know.
But there are a lot of there are magazines out there, you know, Maids of Milken kind of magazines. You know what I'm saying? No. Okay. Okay. <laughs> True. Let me ask you a question about him. Uh, do you think he's actively searching women out like that? Is that no? And people, yeah. people are they just attracted to those type well, of women? He, he's attracted to them, and that's that's what attraction is. It's really based on our relationship with our parents or mm -hmm. our primary caregivers. We we form these sort of senses of who we are in relation to other people by those early relationships. As you hit puberty, those become associated with attractions and arousal mechanisms that then sort of compel you towards those folks. And those people that have been abused or are addicts tend to like and look for people that are going to be caretakers and sort of facilitate or enable their old behaviors. Marconi? Hey. You're uh, 16? 15. You're 15. Yeah, am I talking with the man god Adam and Drew? No, you're talking to uh, Edison and Tesla. Whatever. Ah, uh, <laughs> it's a little Marconi yeah. joke there. Thank you. What's up there, Marconi? I was, I was just wanting to know if it's okay for for my dog and cat to watch me masturbate. Um, are they male or female? Oh, uh, they're both female. Okay, oh, that's, that's cool. That's not right. No, if they were guys, it'd be weird. Oh, I see. If they're chick, chicks. That's fine. One of them's like really fat it's like she'll just <laughs> stare and just sit and just stare you, you can't or the dog is fat the dog it's like a the fat dog this yeah time for you to ask the question that you asked last night about mental conditions and all you yeah. ever uh has anyone ever asked you to take any medication you know for your that brain same? you little nutty me yeah oh, i smoke a little pot that's my medication i see and then when you're, you, do you ever get confused when your dog looks at you masturbating, like he wants to know if his master's hurt, if he should go for help? You know what I mean? Don't you find it a little bit distracting? Sort of, but I sort of blow him off, and I'm just like, <clears throat> you push through it. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, you ever thought about just closing the door, maybe keeping the cat and the dog out of there? We're in the bathroom. Oh, in the bathroom. You bring him oh. in the bathroom. With oh, you. I oh, see. Of course. Yeah, well, you wouldn't want to lock him yeah. out of the bathroom. You can't keep him out of the bathroom. No, he it's like they're fixing eyes on it, and they'll stare the whole time. Right, but is that something you enjoy? Mm, a little bit. You don't mind it? Are you staring at them? No, I'm staring at porn. Staring at porn. Yeah. I see. In the bathroom, we got a magazine. I'll, yeah, and I'll look up every once in a while, and they're just like not yeah. even blinking. It's and the, <clears throat> the cat and the dog are uh, living together in harmony. Yeah, like in the bathroom. The in the cat bathroom, the baby it it uh, tried to breastfeed off the dog. Mm -hmm. I see. Yeah. Well, you know, I would suggest getting a mouse in there so you can really complete the, the uh, animal food chain. At least to and watch you masturbate. I'm a turtle. Okay, oh. bring the turtle in there. Okay. Yeah, I don't know if this would work with a reptile. They don't seem smart enough to enjoy masturbation. A turtle couldn't diddle itself. Imagine being a turtle. You can't get at your own junk your entire life. Oh, Adam. You know what I'm saying? No, you would have killed yourself long. It's like you're living in a trash can and your arms are poking out of each side and you just can't get to your junk. Mm. That would be yeah. rough, right? Very rough. Yeah, if I were a turtle, I'd kill myself. I believe you would. <laughs> Dude, do you show. think this this young man is in bestiality? You think that's no. His no, no, no. He's just really. He's just, he's, he's no. just an idiot. He just he just smokes too much pot. No, not even that. He's just an idiot. Really? But you think he's thinking about that along those mm -hmm. lines? I mean, if he continues to let them watch. No. Mm -mm. He's I, just think, I, think, I think the fact that any living object is sort of fixated on him, he finds empowering, yeah. fascinating. Then again, he's high, too, so he, mm -hmm. right. yeah. he likes the attention, even if it's from his cat and his dog. While he's masturbating, yes. Nice. Laura? Hi. Hey, you're 16. What's up? Uh, first of all, let me say, Adam, Dr. Drew, it's an honor. Well, right. thank you. <laughs> Uh, well, my question is, um, last year I was anorexic for about six months, and um, I've actually covered now, but I'm still really obsessed with my weight and being overweight, you know, and uh, so now I'm using Metabolite, and I'm not sure, I don't. I, what I want to know is if it's going to work or not. Well, let's see, what are you, 16? Mm -hmm. How tall are you? I'm 5'8". How much do you weigh? 125. All right, so you're a little light, right? I guess. All right. So you want to lose weight? Yeah. What do you want to get down to? I want to get down to around 115 or so. Really? Mm-hmm. 5'8". Mm -hmm. That's uh, it's pretty light for 5'8". What makes you think you're in recovery? Well, I mean, I eat now. I eat quite a bit now. Well, you're, you're massively... Well, you're in the midst of a relapse then. Are you going to meetings? No, I'm not. Mm -hmm. I was never in counseling or anything. You need to get treatment. Eating disorder is not something that goes away. Are you sure? Not well, a, apparently not. 
because you're sorry. you're already light and you're trying to get lighter, and now you're taking supplements and you're 16 okay. years old. There's absolutely no way you should be taking that at your age. Okay. Yeah, and uh, what did you, did your mom have you in ballet class when you were young? Uh, I was in dance for seven years. There yeah. you go. Mm. Never take your kid to, to dance class. It's not <laughs> yeah. going to work. I remember that. <laughs> yeah, every every single person with uh, eating disorder has a uh, domineering mom. Domineering moms give uh, daughters eating disorders and turn sons gay. That's what they do. All you in, domineering moms intrusive, out there. intrusive, not just domineering. Because men, women can be assertive and and powerful, but right. when they intrude. Mm -hmm. When they don't acknowledge or respect the child's separateness, right? That's when there's a problem. Well, uh, Drew, your mom did that. How come you didn't go gayer? <laughs> <laughs> How come you if only went sort of more? Gay? Maybe you, I might have. You just went by. I see. No, I didn't quite make it there. Either. Just a little experimenting in college, high school, and then out of college. Deal with the fact that I am gay. Well, there you go. All right, uh, Laura, mm -hmm. you got to get into some counseling. You got to get into some meetings, and uh, you got a bona fide problem here. All right, I'll see what I can do. All right. Yeah, please. Okay. And listen, let me tell you something about uh, uh, skinny chicks. Guys don't like them. Girls like them. And gay <laughs> designers like them. But men don't like them. Men like a little meat on the ass. Okay. They absolutely do. <laughs> and this whole thing, this whole thing that women have, have, have been talked into about being uh, pencil skinny and uh, having a huge, obnoxious jugs, which I personally enjoy. <laughs> most guys do not like. That's most right. guys like a most guys like an ass on a woman. They like a little curve on a woman. It makes the minkas look silly. How dare you make fun of my favorite Asian porn star? I'm sorry, I love that minka. She's. I am number one big bus boob queen. <laughs> I <laughs> have huge breasts and I'm skinny. I'm not fat. <laughs> I ran into minka. Minka is this, uh, she's, you know the thing that's funny about Minka? Minka is like Korean, but all the porn magazines say she's Japanese because there's nothing to hang your hat on with Korean culture. You, you know what I mean? There's just nothing, we don't know enough about it. Japanese works better with all the geisha and all that good, all that good stuff. I think, I think just for most of the porn viewers, Japanese encompasses that takes Korean care of, that's 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 care Asian. of all the Asian nationalities. I think they mean Asian, actually, but they just put Japanese. Well, whatever, it works. And uh, she is uh, really, she may be 110 pounds and has uh, like a 45 triple R uh, knockers on her. And I ran into her at a strip club in uh, Vegas. And it was like a dream come true for me running into uh, one of my idols, Minka. But uh, Minka was mean. And uh, Minka rammed her uh, kneecap into my groin a couple of times. And uh, Minka kept telling me, I am number one Asian big boob queen. You know why men like me? Because I am skinny and I have big bass. I said, that's nice, Minka. Could you uh, pack your uh, shin, your bony shin, into my uh, puny groin just a little bit harder next time? You know, I don't need money. I don't care about money. Money not important to me. I want to I wanna be on TV. You put me on Man Show. You put me on Man Show now. You know why? Because I'm number one Asian big boob porn queen. You know why men like me? Uh, let me guess there, man, because, because uh, you're skinny. and I have, I'm skinny. I have big boob. And I don't care about money. I don't care about money. Money means nothing to me. So that's all right. Fast forward a half hour later. That's $150. <laughs> I swear to God. I said, uh, Minka, uh, you told me you didn't care about money, you didn't need money 115 times in the hour we, you sat here. What you think I put in my gas tank? Compliments? <laughs> I need money. I didn't get to be number one boob, Asian big boob queen by not taking my. I'm like, okay, all right. Hey, listen, all right, here's, uh, here's 150 bucks and here's another 50. Go put that bony knee <laughs> in my partner Jimmy's groin. Go over there and do it. <laughs> you put me on TV show. That's what she said. And I said, uh, <clears throat> you know, Mink, I did call you to put you on the man show. I want to do a bit with you. I know my manager tell me. I said, okay, what are you complaining about? I don't speak good enough English. <laughs> but I'm number one Asian big boo queen. Because I'm, you know why? <laughs> I'll tell you why. I'm skinny with big boobs. So, okay. Well, let me grab a scratch pad and write that down. Skinny... <laughs> Big boobs. Now, oh, hold on. Let me write that down. Let's see. Flat chested, big ass. No! And I don't need money. But the ATM in, in club, you go get me money. I swear to God. I swear to God, she said she didn't need money 150 times. She, I, I wish I had a tape record for the amount of times she said she didn't need money. 
And then at the end, cha-ching. All right. And she hurt me. I'm going to sue, I'm going to sue, uh, Minka. All right. Let's take, uh, no, let, let, let's not take another call. Let's, yeah. let's plug. Yeah. Let's plug and we'll yeah, let, uh, exactly. we'll let, uh, Coop, uh, be on his way because he was just going to stay for the first hour. Again. <clears throat> Thank you, thank you, thank you. Here is the uh, phone number if you want to come out and check out this uh, celebrity softball game, which is going on this Saturday. It's out in uh, Lancaster at the Municipal Stadium, and uh, God knows what that means, but I'll tell you, there ain't a ballpark made big enough that can hold my bat. And I don't mean I don't mean knocking the ball out. I mean physically taking the, the bat, bat itself. running yeah. out to right field and throwing it over the fence. <laughs> I either homer or I trash the dugout. It will be one or the other. And I want everyone to come out uh, this Saturday, five o'clock. Game starts about uh, six, but they're having a big barbecue and all that kind of stuff. You may want to get out there uh, even earlier because the uh, pregame barbecue starts at the, at Lowe's. I was at the Home Improvement Center. I hope that's down the street. That starts at 3, and then the uh, National Anthem is at uh, 6, and I'll be uh, doing my home run trot about uh, 607, 608, I think. Your first trot. That'll be my first trot, yeah. So, uh, or trashing the dugout or at about 603, 604. That's okay, one or the other. That's right. Okay. We're gonna need uh, we're gonna need plenty of beer there, Coop. I got to tell you that uh, right now. No. Is Minka coming with you? <laughs> I will. Oh, bring her's my bat girl. She's, uh, I no. have huge breath and I'm skinny. I'm not fat. <laughs> And the number, if you want to uh, come check uh, all of this out this Saturday, is uh, 661-793-9037. Again, 661-793-9037. Coop, was very nice uh, meeting you. Thanks for coming out. Adam, thank you for having me. Dr. Coop, Drew, it's a pleasure. Next time, I, I'd love to come on the show again. I'll bring my book, uh, Everything You want to know, Wanted to Know About Sex But Were Afraid to Ask. I'll bring that with me. That's so your book. Can, yeah. Oh, bring that with you. And yeah. uh, seriously, when the, uh, when the season uh, starts up again or, uh, or approaches, why don't you come on here? You can uh, bring, bring, uh, someone, yeah. bring a gal or two from the team, and uh, we'll uh, give it a plug. I'd love to. All right. We'll be back after this. Hey, love lunch. Adam Carolla over here, Dr. Drew over there, and uh, in that corner, number one Asian big boob queen, Minka. Hi! I mean, uh, hi! Hi! <laughs> yeah. I love it. Yeah. She's uh, Korean and mean. All Koreans are mean. And they put their knee right in your groin. That's what I've learned about Korea. I didn't know much about it before I met Minka, but now I know. Huge cans. And put their knee in your groin. Remember, That's she, what I know you, about Korea. You said she went on a whole thing about uh, the, the skin thickness or something. My skin extra thick. <laughs> Doctor put extra booby in me. My skin so thick. Most people's skin, 10 mil thick. Mine, 15 mil thick. Now I put extra saline in boob. Make me number one Asian big boob queen. You know why people like me? Uh, personality? No. Uh, your friend? No. Car you drive? No. Skinny, big boob. <laughs> well, that's why, that's what, I got to admit, Minka, initially, that's what attracted me to you. <laughs> now, of course, we have a relationship that transcends all of that. How but, old is she? Oh, <clears throat> it's, it's tough with them Asians, especially number one Asian big boob queens. But, uh... She got to be uh, 30, ooh, she could be 31, 32, or uh, she could be 33. I, I don't know. She looks fine. The thing that's funny, too, is when, you know when people tell you stories and they don't really make sense? Yeah. And you just kind of nod your head because it's too loud, like right. at a party right. or something, and their English is bad. You know, I originally come to this country to be a professional tennis player. <laughs> but one day my coach tell me, Minka, you got to get into porn. So I get into porn, you know, and I'm thinking to myself, tennis coach. how did that work? Yeah, what do you mean you're tennis coach? You, you came to this country to play professional tennis, and I'm sort of on with the tennis thing because it's a weird thing to say, and your coach comes to you and tells you to get into porn? How did that conversation go? You've just got... <laughs> you just you, you just went one at uh, Flushing Meadows. Uh, we're uh, driving back to the hotel. Uh, Mink, I want to talk to you. You could be. You have Number the potential one. to be a decent top ten <laughs> tennis player, but. You have to also have the potential to be the number one Asian big boob queen. I think it probably went that you definitely. Yeah. Definitely. Now, do you want to be number one or do you want to hover around the top twenty for a while? You know what I'm saying? 
I think the decision was an easy one. Ashley? Yes. You're 26. Yes. What's up? Well, I've been dating the same guy for almost three years. Uh-huh. And he's 21. He'll be 22 next month. But um, he's just like a mama's boy. She does everything for him. He won't even spend the night ever. And we used to hang out all the time, just him and I. And now it's like he pulled away. He he wanted to break it off. And then he, a couple of days later, he wanted to get back. And he's just really confused. And he's lost, like, his grandmother and everything. And he's going through a lot with college. And I'm just like... Is it ever gonna get you know gonna change or? So in spite of going to school, he's living at home. Yeah. So you're he's turning twenty three. Twenty two. He's turning twenty two. Mm hmm. And uh, so he's twenty one now. You're twenty six. Mm hmm. You met him when he was eighteen. No, nineteen. All right. You met him when he was uh, nineteen, and you were uh, twenty two or something, twenty three, right? Yeah, I met him at work. I see. We still work together. And he's a mama's boy. I don't trust these mama's boys, <laughs> by the way. Mm. And he won't sleep over, and he talks about being confused and wanting some time out and all that what, stuff. What kind I, of work do you do? Um, data processing. I see. Yeah. I think you may be at the end of this one. I don't think he's that into it. He I, seems like it. he is, though. Because why? Why? Because he's talking about taking time off? No, he's not. He never said, like, I want time off. He just, like, totally was, like... I, confused with his life and he's like that's you know it's over we're we can be friends and i'm like we can hang out he said and i'm like no how is it he's never spent the night why yeah his mom's like really controlling she's like you have to be home and like if if he doesn't come home she's like calling and plus he says it's like a respect for my father and everything for your father yeah is are you living at home i i pay rent and everything with my brother and my father at home so no, so so nice, you're living in makes sense, yeah. Well, it's hard to sleep over when Dad's in the next room <laughs> cleaning his gun. Yeah. Yeah. You can kind of understand why a guy... I mean, Drew, yeah. have you ever slept over at a girl's house where the dad was around? Awful. No way. Mm. No, I'd never do that. Yeah. It's distracting. <laughs> hey, you're 26. What are you doing still at home? Well, because it's more affordable. Well, oh, you know what's you know what's really more affordable? Go to like a youth hostel or homeless shelter. Oh, that, nasty! That's free. No. Well, listen, everything's more affordable. You know, taking the bus is more affordable than owning a car. But there's a certain freedom in owning a car. Do you know what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah, I do that. That see, that's the thing. By living at home, I have my own stuff. Oh, but you you've been working for a while, right? Yeah. You got to get out of that house. Are you going to school too? Um, I am taking some classes right now. That ain't going to school. You, what? You're taking a few junior college classes? Well, yeah, I well, had to. Oh, please, that's nothing. No, I know it's not, but I was better than nothing at all. No, it isn't. Junior college is a high school with ashtrays. Yeah, There's but it's nothing it's going on over job. there. It slows you down. It does. It's better than nothing, though. Is no, your boyfriend no, it's not. Boyfriend in junior college also? No, he's he's in a university. Why doesn't he go live on campus? Because um, everything's free right now. Okay. I mean, yeah. everything he has is like free. <laughs> All right. Well, you guys are paying I, the price for making those choices. Yeah. I don't, a lot I don't, of things are restricted. I don't trust this guy. And plus, this guy said to you that he wanted to break things off. Yeah, I know. So how could he be so in love? Because he's confused. I, I, I mean, know. He's he's a, <laughs> let me tell you what confused is. Confused is I want to break up and I don't know how to tell her. Right. I know. He did, he did go through that. He right. That's... Through that, like three weeks before it, and then when he went through it, he like totally broke it off. And I told him, "Look, you gotta find out what you want, and then come back to me." But and he told to he told it. you, he wants to get out. I know, but then the next day he was calling me. All right. Well, well that's because he thought he was gonna get laid. But again. I didn't talk to him for like, you know, I didn't talk to him for a week, and then he. All right, here, Ashley. Yeah. Here's my honest assessment of your situation. Uh, and take it from me. I'm the number one Asian big boob queen. Well, because he's like... Listen to me, screwball. You're 26. Yeah. You sound like you're 18. 17, yeah. You're living at home. You're dating a guy who's 22. He's living at home. His mom is pulling him around by the uh, scruff of the neck. You're not listening to reality. It's time for you to grow up. I'd say move out of the house, get some independence, get out on your own, and uh, if this guy doesn't want to be in the relationship, I don't, which I don't think he does, fine. You date a nice 28-year-old guy with his own pad and his own wheels. 
You see what I'm saying? Yeah. You've got to be an adult. You're 26. It's time to. You, you, I swear to God, you're going to blink your eyes. You'll be 32 and still living at home. All right. Imagine living with your dad and your brother at 26. True. How fast mm -hmm. would you have killed yourself living at home at 26? Five years before. Yeah, that's right. Would have killed it at 21? Yeah. You know, my, you know, one of my biggest problems in life, I was like 12 living at home going, this sucks. My parents are nuts. This place is a dump. I got to get the F out of here. Except for I'm 12. That's a, that's a horrible realization to be like 12 years old and go, I got to get out of this crampy place with these nutty people. Oh, boy. <laughs> you know what I mean? Not good. That ain't good. Mm -hmm. No. Especially uh, when, you know, you're, you're, uh, you, know, you, you make uh, 50 cents uh, an hour babysitting uh, the kid next door. You know, I was reminded of something you said at one of the colleges we, we spoke at last year where some kid was complaining about having a long-distance relationship. And you, uh, first of all, admonished him for, for not taking advantage of the experience of college and reminded him that college, after all, is just a, a brothel with a clock tower and a football team. Oh, really? <laughs> I forgot about that one. It really is. It's a whorehouse with a football team. <laughs> And, and, a, and a bell tower. And a bell tower. Oh, James? Yeah. You're 16? Yep. What is up? Um, I'm, I have a question for Dr. Drew. Yep. Uh, well, when I, uh, like, um, I haven't had a like, girlfriend for, like, a while, and now, like, I, when I'm messing around with her, I, uh, like, can't really, you know, get a boner. Why is that? Well, I don't know. I'm sure it, it like... It, once I do, it like sh you have to work really hard to get one. Are you nervous? What? Are you nervous? Mm, not too much. Are you on any medication? Well, um, I used to be on uh, Dexedrin. Mm, have you been taking that lately at all? Uh, not for like a few months. No. What's that? What's that do for you? ADD. Yeah, ADHD. Oh boy. Can't we, can we add another initial to that soon? I shove an R in there or something. A D H F D. B F D. A D H B F D. Oh, listen, I don't believe anyone has any of that junk. Why do you give her R F? Thank you. Uh, so R James, F. no other medications lately. Um, no. All right. All right. Well, something's making anxiety is other than other than medication and medical problems, nervousness, anxiety is the, the most common reason to have difficulty attaining erection. So something's sort of bugging you. Something about the circumstances. Something about this relationship. Is this something you're really into? Um, yeah, I mean, I've been gone for like like four or five months now. Does it make you nervous that she's that she's mm, somebody you're really into? Not really. Okay. All right. Well, it'll come back. Uh, I, I don't know what to say. The, the, the problem with the penis is, um, well, we're talking about playing softball tonight. I'll just uh, draw one of my uh, baseball analogies. Um when I played baseball in high school, if I got a hit my first time up at plate, up at the plate, I was much more likely to get a hit the second time up. Uh, much looser, much more confident, mm -hmm. and figured, hey, if I ground out, I'm still batting 500. Mm -hmm. uh, as opposed to striking out the first time I got up, which I uh, oftentimes did, because I like to start the game off with a good K. Uh, the second time I'm up, I'm trying to tweak things, I'm trying to change things, and right. I'm thinking, for Christ's sake, don't strike out again. Right. And uh, sure enough, what do I do? Strike out. Actually, I doubled in the power alley. But, uh, yeah. No, no, you're right. You strike out. And why? You're thinking too much. You can't think when you're having sex. you got to have sex. You, you just can't. It's like, it's like if you're swinging a golf club and you're thinking about what you're going to do all the way through the swing, what are you going to do? I mean, you just gotta, you just got to get up. you got to feel good, feel confident, feel comfortable, and swing away. David? Yeah. You're 16. Yeah. What's up? My girlfriend wants me wants to have sex, but I refuse. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Refreshing. Who's this? Truman Capote? <laughs> huh? <laughs> oh boy. Keep talking, David. No, he's. Oh, he hung up. Mm. You know, he sounded like there was this old actor who uh, used to do a lot of voiceover work. He's a big, fat guy, and he'd always be down at the country store, and he'd, bah, rah, rah, he kind of had uh, bah, that uh, in him. And I can't think of the guy's name, and I can only picture his face, but uh, oh, we'll just cut I that part of the show. <laughs> uh, What's the name? What was the actor's name? Remember that? Oh, Huell Hauser. Oh, God, don't make me go off on Huell Hauser. Who's he? Who's Huell Hauser? Yeah. Who's Huell Hauser? Yes. 
Don't you ever watch KCET? You don't watch public television? A little bit. Huell Hauser is the guy who goes and interviews the most boring people in the world <laughs> in the most boring places in the world. Really? You've never seen that guy? I don't think so. This mission was established in what year? 1845. That's incredible, sister. You never see him out doing that stuff? No. You've never seen Huell Hauser. I don't think so. You know I'm what ready. I love? Here's what I love, uh, Anderson, about working with Drew. What must it be like for a comedian to work with a guy who never knows what the hell he's talking about, whatever reference he's making? That, that I can make a reference to The Shining, and he has no idea what I'm talking about. Do you understand what kind of handicap that is for me? I mean, it keeps you working out every night. It's like, it's like adding weight to the barbell. You know? Huell Hauser, if you have a TV, you should know who Huell Hauser is. Huell Hauser's a guy, he's not like a household name, it's just every time you turn the TV on and you're flipping around through the Maybe channel. Maybe I have, I just don't remember. I don't All right, he's a, guy. he's a sort of very friendly, boring, Midwestern guy with kind of big arms who's always walking around interviewing people from Southern California. Today... Today, he was uh, at a place that made uh, pork rinds, and I was laughing my ass off. So the pork goes into the uh, to the fat over here, and uh, how is the pork rinds? How are those, trans how are those transported? A uh, truck. A uh, truck? And how many, how, how long has this f business been in your family? 115,000 years, Hugh. Of hundred and oh, and how are they transport a truck? And he's amazed by everything all the time, even though you're bored off your ass watching. And he he loves to go to tortilla factories. He loves to go to a place where this is oh baklava. I don't believe I've had that before. And oh, this is delicious. And how long has your family been? Uh, Eighteen thousand years, you Eighteen thousand years, and how is the baklava transported? Uh, in a truck, you In a truck. He's like he's shocked and amazed every time. You Here's the deal. There are these places. They have roofs on them and walls. They have loading docks, and they bring in um, they bring in raw ingredients, and then they cook them, and then they ship out a finished product. And sometimes it's baklava, and sometimes it's tortilla chips. And the point is, is it's all the same process and no one cares but you. And he'll walk around to old, he likes to go to old, uh, striking California gold with Huell Hauser. And you have no idea what I'm talking um, about. Mm -mm. Zero. That sounds very exciting, though. You've never seen Huell Hauser. Not that I can recall. How does that work? How does it work? What goes on? Do you think I'm lying? You know what I, no, you know what I think you're like? You know when they transport hostages? Mm hmm. Like, they're like, insulated from, the, yeah. Right. Like, so what happens is, is, you know, like when a 60 Minutes reporter has to interview the hostage takers, right, they, they the terrorists, blindfold them. how do they, they pick them up at his hotel and then what? Blindfold them. Blindfold them, spin them around, put them, throw them in the back of a van, and they drive in circles around Tel Aviv for a while, mm -hmm. and then they end up at a place, and then once he gets in, they take the blindfold off. I think that's the exact same thing with you when you leave your office, except for when you get home, you don't take the blindfold off. Right, just leave it on. So van picks you up at your office, they blindfold you, they drive around Pasadena in a circle for an hour and 45 minutes, then they drop you off in your living room. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> baklava! Yes, it's a baklava. He goes, baklava! You never do. He is more... I'm at the Lari Seasoning Salt Plant here in beautiful Eagle Rock, California. What do you ship the taco salt in? Hmm. A truck. A truck? How long have you been making this seasoning? 17 million years, Huel, since uh, before the earth cooled. Amazing! Hmm. you never seen the... Oh, all right. Now I'm going insane. i got to bring a tape. Anderson, we got to get a tape of Huel. And I, he must be on every night. I was watching him night. I must... Uh, 6 o'clock. Hmm. I swear to Christ, he was talking about pork rinds. I believe you. And Huel, some of these pork rinds are pickled, and the other ones we deep fry in lard, and that becomes the uh, the uh, crunchy confection that you uh, that you buy at the uh, supermarket. And how do you ship these pork rinds? In a truck, Huel. A truck? He's amazed. He's like he's like when your grandmother looks at something you made in um, in the third grade. 
He walks around. Oh my! And what is it? That's where we. That's where we boil the fat. You'll the fat. Oh look! It's a big old tub of fat. Yeah, and we pork. Oh, I see. The the pork goes into the fat. Yes, that's right, Huel. And then what? It comes out the other side, Huel. Out the other side. Oh yeah, I see. And, and so this is what went into the fat. <laughs> uh, yeah, Huel. That's what went in. See, it got cooked. I can't. So this is what we saw earlier. Now after it's been cooked. That's right, Huel. That's you see. That's how it works. We we cook it in in the fat. <laughs> and how do you transport it again? <laughs> Truck. All right. <clears throat> we'll take a little break. It's getting us. Never seen Huel. No. Never seen Not the maybe house. I was recall. Uh -huh. All right. We'll take a break. We'll be back. Uh, hey. Uh, no. Well, listen, I, I don't have this thing turned up. We have a little technical difficulty tonight. That's all right. All right, Drew, shut that door back there, would you? Yeah. Thank you very much. Let's hop back on the phone. There we go. Is that the Echo? Yep. Echo. I'm here. You're 17? I am. What's the matter, baby? Um, my boyfriend and I, we've been going out for about four months now. And uh, when we first started going out, he was over here like every night. And now I see him maybe once or twice a week. Yeah. And I don't know what's up. Neil, yeah. right. how old is he? Twenty-four. Oh boy, yeah, he's a lot older than you are. Yeah. Did you sleep with him? Oh yeah. Um. How long uh, into the relationship did that happen? Uh, about a month ago. A month ago. When did he stop coming so frequently? Uh, about um, a month ago. Uh, about a month ago. Oh, so shocking. Yeah, he was working toward that. Yeah, built. He got the build up, and that's it. Hey, Echo, the guy's twenty-four. He's an ass. Mm -hmm. Of course. Listen, any any you idiots out there that are 24 and dating a chick in high school, there's, there's some kind of colossal ass. Mm -hmm. Idiots. Why are you dating an idiot? That's the question. I don't know. What's the matter with you? Why are you so depressed? Um, problems at home. What's the matter? Um, well, we're about, we're, um, we're going through problems. We might be losing the house and just all sorts of Hey, Echo? I'm sorry about that. No, I know, but I'm sorry. I have to hang up on you, all right? All right. I'm sorry about your problems, but uh, you can't use the S word on the air. And uh, that is going to be uh, the new policy from now on, Kitty. Use, uh, use the F word, use the S word. I hang up on you. Sorry to do it. Sorry for your problems, Echo. But uh, listen, you retards. You're on the goddamn radio. Wait a minute. Did I swear there? I More importantly, though, she needs to understand the guy she's with is an idiot. An ass, a, dist a criminal. Yes, by definition. And I know you feel bad about yourself, and the problem is, is you're trying to get a bad person to make you not feel bad about yourself, and that's a bad idea. Making you feel worse. Write that down, Drew. Yeah. Very good. Devin. Hi. <clears throat> you're 14. Yeah, Adam. I just want to say, like, I strive to be like you, like every day. Really? I'm serious. I like adapted like all your little you things that you do three times like, a day. Thank you. Did you nap and masturbate today? I nap. <laughs> uh, okay, but I say well, all your little sayings, and I don't know. But, but like what? Like, uh, listen up, you screwballs, and let's see what else <laughs> they say. Nice. How dare you? That'll get you far. <laughs> listen up, screwballs. <laughs> all right, well, thank you, Devin. Kiss my ass, you idiots. What? Oh, no, wait, that, 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 that wasn't for you, baby. All right, anyway. what, what's going on? Okay, I just want Dr. Drew. Yeah. Uh, I went to the, okay, I'm on Zoloft. I've been on Zoloft for like six months, right? All right. And, uh, like, I stopped taking it for a while, like after the first two or three months, maybe. Why? Um, I don't know. I just forgot. Okay. I kept on forgetting, and then I started up again, like, maybe three weeks later. All right. And ever since I started taking it up again, like, my throat would close, and I couldn't breathe, and my throat hurt, like, so bad. My tongue would swell, and my eyes would water, and i get, like, so nauseous, right? How long would that last for? Like, for maybe an hour. Oh, boy. And then just spontaneously would get better? Well, it would gradually get better. It wouldn't be, like, But it's fun. I didn't say suddenly, but spontaneously. You wouldn't take any medication to make it better or anything like that. And when I, I was no, I didn't take any medication. I just sat there and drank water and... 
Yeah. All right. Well, you got to talk to your doctors that were prescribing because it could be a very serious allergic reaction. And one of those times, your tongue could swell up to the point that you can't breathe. You can get asthma and not breathe. I mean, it can be a mega mess. So. Can you breathe through your nose if your tongue swells up? No, because it includes down here. No, yeah. those gets so. Listen, I'm I'm no uh, no kidding. No biology major. Yeah. I I didn't uh, take anatomy. You don't breathe your eyes. No, no. Joe. Yeah. You're uh, 20. What's up? Yeah. Um, I had a, a hernia repaired like a few months ago. Nice. And <laughs> yeah, thanks. And I was wondering if um that could have weakened my uh, erection. Weakened it? Yeah, it's it wouldn't be uh as as uh, uh connected maybe. No, connected to what? Well, the the, the muscle uh, area around no. that. No, you're, you're fine. Should be fine. Well, it seems I I mean I imagine it was uh, a a little stronger before. Yeah, imagine is the key word here. <laughs> okay, I'm all right, but uh, it it still really hasn't healed completely. Then you need to get back to see the surgeon, maybe get some wound care. Yeah. All, all right. right. That's it? That's it. Wound care. Okay. Wound care. Why is that surprising to you? We have a wound that hasn't healed yet. All right, real fast. Hey, Kathy. Yeah? You're 15? Yeah. You have night terrors? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, my God. How are we going to settle this in 15 seconds? <laughs> Cruz P.O. Uh, they need to be treated. They can be treated anyway, if you're, if you're interested. If it's disrupted your sleep, if you're having other sleep disturbances, who yeah. should you go to? What? The sleep sleep center, sleep disorder. Go to a sleep or, or center. A psychiatrist. Now, is, I, I'm uh, again. I'm no therapist. Is that different than a mattress store? Yeah, a little different. Hmm. They take the same pictures of people tossing around in bed. Right. Yeah. I like. I like that time lapse stuff. Yeah. Here's how you sleep on your mattress. We uh, took a uh, we took a, a 13 hour film of you sleeping. Oh my God! Look at you. You rolled over. <laughs> Eight times. Yeah. Of course. I get up, take a leak, watch some TV, masturbate, shoot up. There'd be all sorts of stuff on there. All right, we'll take a break. We'll be back. In a truck? No, no. no. All right, that's it. I want to thank uh, Danielle for doing a great job on the phones and uh, with the water and the coffee and, quite frankly, reminding us that she does a great job each time <laughs> she comes in here. She is my little guy. I like to give her a big hug. And uh, I want to thank uh, <clears throat> Anderson. He had a rough night. He had to patch together some uh, technical equipment and uh, did a wonderful job. And what is that beeping that's going on? Oh, no. I mean, saying, we'll okay. Michael Cooper. Oh, Michael Cooper for coming in and uh, doing a uh, great job. And uh, I want to give a shout out to Adam and Dr. Drew. Yeah. Yeah. Who was that? I don't know. I don't know. Let's keep going. All right. Uh, again, uh, Saturday, you can uh, come out and watch me destroy the dugout. Uh, again, the number six six one seven nine three nine zero three seven. 693 The uh, celebrity uh, softball game to uh, benefit a very worthy cause. And until next time, this is Sam Kroll for Dr. Groove saying mahalo. I'm number one, uh, Oriental Big Boob Queen. This has been Love Line. The opinions expressed on this show are not necessarily those of the staff, management, sponsors, or this station. The producer for Loveline is Ann Wilkins Engel. Loveline is a presentation of Westwood One Entertainment.